Hi there everyone, Josiah here with Womp Rock Creations and it's time for a show and tell. Um, this behemoth sitting next to me is something I've been working on for a while and I chose not to film the building of it. The reason for that is because I had no idea if I was going to actually be able to build this. Um, this is my vacuum forming machine. A vacuum forming machine is essentially um, a machine that will heat up a, a suspended sheet of plastic and then uh, once that sheet of plastic is malleable and uh, soft, you can pull it down over an object and then use a vacuum to suck the uh, sheet of plastic over whatever that form is and once the plastic cools it'll harden and you get a shell of whatever you put under the sheet of plastic. So um, you can probably guess that that is an extremely useful tool for model making and prop making. Um, I have made several in the past that have worked to varying degrees. Um, none of them were great. Uh, but I used those uh, failures as uh, a learning opportunity and I have put together this vacuum forming machine. I know it's giant, um, it's a lot, but I'm going to walk you guys through it. First of all, I needed something to, to heat my sheet of plastic. So for that I have this platform up on top that has a nichrome wire uh, that will heat up. It's essentially um, the same thing that's like in your toaster. Um, I have a nichrome wire up here that will heat up once I get it going. Uh, I have a frame that uh, will hold my sheet of plastic that goes inside here and will sit right up on these uh, support bars right here. Suspending the plastic right, ab uh, right below the heat. Then you have a platen. The platen is the uh, the platen is the surface that your vacuum pulls down from. So uh, whatever my form is that I want to vacuum form, I'll put it on this. Uh, for for my platen, I use platen. For my platen, I used uh, some steel perforated plate because it already had a bunch of really, really tiny, really, really close together holes. Um, I'll put my form on here. I'll let my uh, plastic heat up and get malleable. Then I'll pull the frame down over, turn on the vacuum underneath, and hopefully uh, my sheet of plastic will suck down around whatever the object is that I put on here. Um, don't worry, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to walk through this. The reason that I'm actually pulling it out right now is because uh, I'm still not positive that it works. I know that each of the components works, um, the heater, the vacuum, uh, by the way, my vacuum, I did get a nice vacuum pump, but uh, I did a test with that and for some reason it wasn't pulling enough vacuum. Um, I don't know if... Uh, the vacuum that I, according to the specifications, it should be more than enough, but um, it's not. So I don't know if I was sold a false bill of goods or um, if it was, was just a problem with me and how I had the vacuum hooked up to this. So what I ended up doing is uh, jerry-rigging a shop vac motor um, into my plate and, and that should suffice but I don't know if it will because I haven't tested this I know that the vacuum will turn on but I don't I haven't tested to see if everything will work together yet we're gonna do that together um, the other important thing to mention is uh, I'm gonna show you guys my wiring job down below this I am NOT an electrician so do not look at the rat's nest of wires down there and try to replicate what I have done because I can tell you just by looking at it, it's not safe. It's probably not gonna hold up great over time so I'm going to 
need to devote some time to making those connections more permanent, but this is a test. And I think, like I said, I've turned all the components on and they all work without producing any kind of crazy smoke or fire, um, but be careful, please. Um, I did have to wire this all through a three position switch where the middle position is off. So if I flip it up, my uh, heater turns on, the middle position is off, and then the down position is the vacuum. The reason I did that is because if I had the heater and the um, vacuum on at the same time, I would blow a fuse. Um, this all is 15 amps and it, it can't take any more. So I used the three position switch to make sure that I cannot, I physically cannot have both the vac or the heater and the vacuum on at the same time. Now that that has all, I think I've caught you guys up on what's going on. I think it's time to go ahead and do our test. So I already have a sheet of plastic in my frame and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into position below the heater. I'll get the heater going. This heater actually heats up pretty quickly, which is really nice. I like that. It does not take long for our plastic to get to the appropriate level of malleability. All right, there we go. Frame is in place, and now that's plugged in. Go ahead and turn this on. All right, I'm gonna turn the heater on. I can hear it going. And this heater actually, like I said, it heats up pretty quickly, which is really nice. I need something that I'm gonna form and I'm gonna go ahead and just use this, uh, this mallet that I have because I don't really have anything that I need to vacuum form at the moment. So I'm just gonna use that. It won't, uh, it won't hurt it. The other thing that you need is some gloves. When heat is involved, protect yourself. Don't, uh, don't try to uh, muscle through the pain. Uh, heat will cause a lot of damage. And especially when I, I'm working with new components like this where I wire them together, any kind of uh, barrier I can put between myself and it, at least for a little while until I make sure everything is mechanically and um, electronically sound, uh, all the better. I, I don't want to be shocking myself or burning myself or anything like that. So, by the way, I will tell you guys something while this plastic is heating up. An interesting thing happens when you suspend a sheet of plastic below a heat source. Um, first of all, I am using styrene. Styrene works really, really well for vacuum forming because it's, uh, it's got a pretty low um, melting point. So it doesn't take long to heat up and get malleable. You wanna be careful not to melt it because then it will, um, it'll be a mess. Yeah, you don't wanna deal with that. You can't vacuum form with melted plastic, but um, it gets to its uh, malleable point fairly quickly, but the point between malleable and melting is pretty close. It's pretty close with styrene, so you wanna be careful. But what I was gonna say is when you suspend a sheet of plastic below a heat source, it's interesting because at first, the plastic will start to bow up towards the heat source, and that's because the, the top of the sheet of plastic is hotter than the bottom of the sheet of plastic. So it'll start to buckle up as those molecules expand. Then as the heat goes through the whole thing, it's doing what you guys probably can't see where you are right now. I don't want to move you guys to a different position until uh, so that you can see when I actually drop this down, but it'll start to droop. And that's when uh, the whole sheet is heated uniformly and all the molecules are equally uh, stretching and, and moving. Um, but interesting thing for you to know, at first it'll start to buckle up towards the heat and then it'll all uniformly droop and it's drooping pretty good right now. I, 
I want to let it heat up a little bit more. A lot of this is kind of a feeling out process. Everything kind of depends on your heater, your distance from your heater, the thickness of the plastic you're using, the type of the thickness you're using, type of plastic you're using. Um, there's a lot of variables that can go into this. So um, usually takes, oh, and whatever you're forming, whatever your buck is, uh, the thing that you form is commonly referred to as a buck. Um, whatever your buck is, if it's really tall or really wide or whatever it is, it might take a couple times to uh, make sure that everything is working well. All right, this is drooping really well right now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Yeah, I think it's about time. So, turn heater off, frame down, vacuum on. I know, it's probably loud. I mean, I'll, I'll turn the volume down in post so you guys don't have to listen to the vacuum scream for that long. But um, I left the vacuum on for a while because the other thing that it, the vacuum serves is to pull the heat away from the sheet of plastic. If you don't let it cool enough before turning the vacuum on, it can bubble back up and not quite keep the shape. But um, this turned out Really cool, about as good as I could hope for. Um, I'll show you guys here in a second, but um, no, you know what? I'll go ahead and pull this out and I'll walk you guys through what uh, worked really well and what I probably need to change for the next one. Okay, so I have liberated my mallet from my sheet of plastic and you can see that um, uh, you can get the idea of how this can be really useful in model making. Um, you can make curved objects, complex objects that you can't really build out of sheet styrene, out of geometric shapes. Um, you can create a buck and, and achieve that shape in plastic with, uh, with the vacuum former. Um, now the things that, as you can see, um, you saw that after I pulled it down and turned the vacuum on, I started using my fingers to kind of push the plastic down around the uh, hammer. And that's because um, the vacuum worked really well. In fact, so well that in some areas, you guys probably can't see it, maybe on this side in the light. Um, I actually got some of the texture of the perforated steel plate of the platen. Um, that's fine um, because what I actually need is the vacuum form, and as long as that texture isn't on my vacuum form, it's fine. Um, but the reason that I started pushing the plastic down around the, um, my mallet is because uh, the vacuum uh, was not pulling it down around the, um, my mallet, and that might be for a couple different reasons. It might be because the plastic I'm using is too thick. Um, it wasn't heated enough. Um, so this is, I used 060 styrene. I think, I think I'm gonna go a little thinner and I'm also gonna use a different buck because to be honest, like the only reason I use it is because I knew it wasn't gonna hurt this and I don't have anything that actually needs to be vacuum formed at the moment, but um, it's not necessarily the best thing to be vacuum forming either. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna use an 040 
uh, styrene instead of an 060. It's a little thinner and um, I'm gonna look for a different buck and we'll see how that goes. We'll do one more test. But I am super thrilled with how well this has worked out. Um, my frame held up, held up fine. It held a sheet of plastic fine. Um, I also think I'm going to let my sheet of plastic cool just a little bit more before I take it off next time. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna cut some styrene out for this and then I'll find a buck and I'll meet you guys back at the vacuum floor. All right, you guys, I'm all set up for my second test. Um, for this one, I just put together some little Legos to see what kind of detail that I can get out of this one. Um, but I have my 040 styrene up there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the heater turned on, get my plastic heated up, and I'll attempt to give you guys a better angle of what's going on this time. you guys I have liberated my second uh, test sheet of plastic from the frame I've liberated the Legos out of that and um, I'm actually pretty happy with how this is going it's performing pretty well um, one thing that I am becoming more aware of with each test is I need to be heating up my plastic just a little more than I am um, but that's the point of doing tests and I would rather err on the side of under heating my plastic in when I'm first testing them out uh, than overheating because like I said I don't want to melt my plastic I don't want to burn anything so um, that is why I am I have been under heating my um, my plastic is I just don't want to break anything uh, but uh, now I know that I can heat it a little more next time. Uh, but these are my two um, tests side by side. I know, it, I changed too many var variables in between for it to be um, uh, following the scientific method. But um, I feel like I could still get some, some goodness out of it. Um, this one, like I said, I wasn't upset at this one at all. In fact, for the type of buck that this was, um, this came out pretty nice. The Legos um, also came out fairly nice. I didn't get as much detail as I was expecting, but like I said, I'm pretty sure that's because I didn't heat up the plastic enough. Um, so, I am gonna call my vacuum former a success though. All of the components work, and I am really, really pleased about that because this is the most complex wiring electronic system that I have ever done. And like I said, that's part of the reason why I didn't film the making of it because I wasn't even sure if I was gonna be able to pull it off. Um, there's still some stuff that I need to do with the, well, to the vacuum former to get it like good and solid and, but this is a good, this is a good place to be at. I have a couple tests done. I can continue, I mean, at this point, it's at the, um, the stage where I can use it. It is, it is working, I can use it for whatever I need it for. Um, so, thank you guys for tuning in for this extended show and tell. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.
Hey, thank you so much for watching that whole video. That really helps us out with continuing to bring you these cool videos. The other thing that really helps us out is our merch. You can head over to WampRatCreations.com and pick yourself up some really cool stuff. Just like this, visit Scenic Hoth Travel T-shirt. Thanks, guys. Five three to upper bay door. Five three to upper bay door.